Yeah. Okay, should we turn on the semifinals while we while we do the? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 There's like sound on the background. <laughs> You can start off and then... Uh, yeah, I mean, just as far as how much we're supporting StarCraft in the future, is that the question? Um, I mean, obviously, we, we, we talked about the Nova missions, which are, we're really excited about, because that's the first time ever we're, we're going to uh, expand on the campaign and do more campaign-focused missions, and Nova's a great character as well. So we're really excited about that. The, the co-op missions are going to have new maps, new heroes, and new commanders as well coming in, in, in the future. Um, and, of course, multiplayer, we always support that with balances, and, you know, I think you can talk more about that. Yeah, uh, we're going to do balance patches and seasonal map updates as we have always done. But on top of that, we're also uh, exploring, do we need to go in and maybe add new units to the game? Because after one or two years have passed, uh, maybe there's a need for, maybe the strategies became a little more stale, right? So maybe uh, we're talking about uh, things along those lines. But uh, on top of that, there's also the skins that are coming in with Legacy of the Vo or Post Ship and voice packs, things like that. So the full team is going to go full on developing for StarCraft 2 even after the release of Legacy of the Void. Well, on the, just from the art perspective, um, it's been really cool seeing it. I mean, I've been here for all three games and seeing it develop and, and improve each each time we have a new game come out. And like you know, we we try and make the art, you know, that much tighter, that much higher quality, that much more polished every time. And sometimes even the personnel would shift. Like we'll get different artists in and they'll move around a bit. But we always try to keep the style consistent. And I think creatively, it's really challenging for us to figure out how to keep it fresh all the time and make it new. And it's helped out having the different themes for each expansion. You know, if it was all three races equally represented in each game, it would be a little different. But since we basically went Terran, you know, Zerg, now Protoss, we can really dive in and kind of get com comfortable and, and really focus our energies on, like, that race. And so it kind of makes it easier to, to uh, exude that, their style throughout the, everything. I think for me, um, back in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm, our design process was more like, what, what can we do to make the game better? Um, and it was very uh, development team focused, whereas in Legacy of the Void, we kind of opened it up to the community. So we tried to have discussions that we would have internally, but open it up to the community so that we have way more voices and way more eyes on issues. And that process has really um, made Legacy of the Void much better than we expected. So from that point of view, I think that evolution was something that uh, happened a little bit naturally as well as uh, we did our best to support this type of thing but that like finding that was very great for the game and because we continue we will continue to develop Legacy of the Void going forward we'll continue doing this process and iterating on the process as well and I think what we have ahead of us is very exciting as well because of that. Uh, we've had female Protoss before with Salindus, but, but now we feature even more, multiple ones um, in the campaign, as you'll see on Tuesday, um, as well as the multiplayer Adept unit, which is our first female warrior. Um, I, I think it's, there's a, I think we're used to on the art side doing the typical, you know, Protoss, and, the, and they're all male, of course, and they have like their hardened shells and, and their, they have a certain look to them, but uh, we try to figure out, the, probably the, the biggest challenge is trying to figure out how to soften them up and make them feel feminine, but still very alien and not human, obviously. Um, and it's kind of cool with the multiplayer unit, like the Adept, 
she's heavily armored, so it makes it a little easier in that, in that sense. But the, the portrait we do, the 3D portrait and the window, we really try to put in all the extra details and again soften her features up a little bit and make her a little more feminine, but still keep that, that alien, you know, Protoss theme. You know, I think right now there's it's almost like a separation where we'll design, you know, Davey will design a lot of stuff for multiplayer, like based on the needs of the community and, and the, the balance and, you know, what, what each race needs to, to help fill in the gaps. And on the multiplayer, or on the campaign side, we'll take any of that stuff that works, but we'll also make brand new ones just for that. So we really don't feel like we're, we're forced to, to use the multiplayer units if we don't need to in the campaign and vice versa. Because I, I can understand it if there's like a cool, we use like a new multiplayer unit for like a cool boss or like a little maybe a minion type thing and there's like a hundred of them suddenly like you know the, the frame rate suffers or we have readability issues um, so really that's not too much of a problem because we kind of separate those two things out So, um, on the one hand, like you say, we have we have had the experience of working through balance issues in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. So on the one hand, it's a little bit easier, we think, in Legacy of the Void. But at the same time, if you look at the number of changes that we did in Legacy of the Void compared to Heart of the Swarm, the changes are massive. So in that sense, we're a lot more worried than we were in Heart of the Swarm. So I think overall, we're in a very similar state as we were in Heart of the Swarm. So we expect some balance issues to come up, um, but we'll work through them as we need to. And so our current thought is, we just had a meeting with the Live Ops team, uh, which handles the uh, patching process. And then we said, at the end of the meeting, our conclusion was, okay, so the first patch can come anywhere from week one to end of the month so there's like a very rough estimate of what uh what we'll find but we'll uh we'll go as we as we um see the issues come up So we feel that although we've went through so many different balance issues and solved uh, different issues, every balance problem is so different that there is no one way to just go about um, solving the problem. So how we see it is um, we try to take a lot of incomplete information and try to make the best call. So what I mean by that is, like you mentioned, we look at the data, we get the pro feedback, we get community feedback, and we have a large group of people out there, whether it's community influencers, casters, pro players, coaches, and so on. Uh, those guys give us feedback separately as well. So, and then we also play, our, play the games ourselves too, and we watch almost every single important match uh, across the design team. And then we try to make the right call uh, first to see is this a real issue or is this something just that's that people are saying for a little while but it's gonna go away things like that and once we've determined that there is a balance issue then we'll go about uh, working through uh, using our forums to discuss ideas with the community uh, iterating through different balance test maps to really figure out what the best solution is and so on and then that's how we make our uh, balance patches Uh, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes we'll make art independently. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll jam together and say, like, hey, what does this unit do? What's the general range and, you know, um, general specifics on, uh, or general ideas on uh, how strong it is. And then we know that might change, like, going through the beta process. So we'll make art 
it's kind of like off on a tangent how we think it's going to look cool, but sometimes the balance might change. And in this case, if something looks really out of out of um, out of sorts, where like that that looks way too weak for how strong that guy is, or, or vice versa, um, we can definitely patch that stuff in later yeah. on. So, I mean, I think I think the, the the bottom line answer is if we get more feedback as the game, and then once the game gets released, and we get it out in the wild, and millions of people are playing it, then we'll get a lot more data, so we can we can determine if that's a real problem or not. That's tough. Um, you know what? Uh, one of the cool ones that uh, I waited a long time to get in is that it was the uh, Protoss Disruptor, one of the new multiplayer units. Um, we actually had a, a unit very similar to that in we, for a little while in Heart of the Swarm that we ended up taking out. I think it was called the Replicator at that time. Mm -hmm. And so um, we re redid the art from scratch and changed a few things on it. But um, I, I love mechanical or ro robotic units and like high sci-fi, which I love the Protoss. Um, so I'm kind of biased, but uh, that's probably the coolest one. I think visually, just seeing this awesome spinning robotic tech, um, and when it blows up, it looks amazing. So um, I think that's. I mean, there's so many good ones out there, but that's, that's one of my favorites. Cool. Oh. Um, so I try so hard to keep myself from being biased towards a race or a unit. So it's kind of tough to say, but um, I do think a lot of the new units that are coming in look really nice uh, across the board. Um, and I kind of really look forward to just seeing those in action. I don't, I don't know if I have a specifically like one favorite one or anything like that, but they all seem really, really cool to me. And I think uh, Alan and his team did a really good job at arting the new units. Yeah, so for the Cyclone, uh, we worked through a lot of, uh, not just the Cyclone, but every new unit that went into the game. We worked through both the balance and the design of the of the units throughout the beta. So, um, like, the Cyclone changed from this unit that you can mass because they're so all around by themselves. So at, towards the beginning of the beta, you saw in the end game, all the Terran player has is maybe like 30, 40 Cyclones, right? Um, but then we thought that type of design is not correct, so we've made it into a more of a less all-round role. So uh, right now you see them more so in the early game and the mid game and not as much in the late game, uh, which we think is a better place. And the balance of it, we do hear people's um, concerns that maybe the balance is not quite there yet. Uh, so we're definitely gonna have to work on that. Um, but for the live game, we're more We'll be more focusing on the balance of the units, and like I mentioned before, we will explore major redesigns to the game when necessary also, but I think the main difference is in beta, because it's the first time these units are being used, we have to worry both about balance and design, whereas in a live game, we'll focus a little bit more heavily on the balance side of it. Yeah, so it kind of goes back to what we talked about uh, previously of that's why we need to look at all these different factors. Like none of these things say the full story just by themselves. Um, so I think part of balancing StarCraft II is taking a lot of good but incomplete information and making the best call that we can. And there's no, there's no, this is 100% true because of this 100% thing over here, right? Maybe what someone says is maybe... 50% true and then 40% true here, 60% true, and then we make the right call, right? But like you said, I think that is one of the difficulties, especially for pro gamers, because a lot of pro gamers give us feedback with a mindset that I said this, so you have to act on it, but the problem is, as you know, if one person says disruptors are OP, there's another person saying 
disruptors are underpowered, right? So we try our best to look at the game from all these different angles as well as we try to take feedback from as many people as possible and we don't care as much if it's positive feedback or negative feedback it's just part of the game right so we try to make the best call that way instead of just trusting one person or two people or a small group of players oh um, yeah generally speaking Oh, and the, the posters, it, sometimes it depends, um, but often, usually Terrans, we have them like blue, we have blue armor on, um, Zerg is more like purples, you know, oranges, warm colors, browns, reds, and, you know, the Protoss have their gold, but they also use the, their blue emissive color running through them, like, they, and it, the Terrans also have a little bit of green, like, for their, their technical, like, uh, heads-up displays and uh, computers and stuff like that, but... Um, we just we try to keep within those themes just to make it as strong as possible to separate them out so it feels like we're not getting too muddy with the different different colors and getting too uh, Christmassy with having too many colors. I think we just think in general terms of what the the big themes are for each race and like the the, the aesthetics of it versus the you know identifying with just the, the, the pure like team color of it. I think there's the, the whole package is involved. Like if you want if you like alien gooey zergy spiky stuff, it's like obviously the zerg for you. You know more like vicious. Um, if you want something more elegant and more high-end and classic sci-fi, then, you know, the Protoss. And, of course, the Terran's a little more junked out, um, a little more uh, rugged and, uh, you know, utilitarian in, in a way. So I think it's more themed like that than it is for the colors. Well, we don't really feel too limited, even in the past. Like, we knew, yeah, there's a certain story, things, and there's certain beats we have to hit along the way, but I think within those within those loose confines, we have, like, a lot of freedom to, to hit those points up. So I think creatively, we, we didn't feel too constrained. Um, the Nova missions are going to be awesome, and we, we feel like we can push it even further. Like, we're, we're, trying, we're trying to figure out how to make old locations, like space stations or uh, Protoss temples, whatever, when you re revisit them again, make them feel like unique and fresh, and like what's cool about them now. Because we've we've had like 75 missions over the course of the last, you know, I don't know how many, six, seven years since we've been out, and it's challenging to come up with new ways to to put like a, a good coat of a fresh coat of paint on some of those old missions. Um, for the lower stuff in the canon, we're still very much within the Starcraft universe, so we don't want to do anything too crazy. Like, hey, there's a fourth race, and no one's fighting them, you know. So we we still want to make sure that we don't change the, the core of what the Starcraft lore is. But it, I think it really lets us kind of deep dive into more like the intimate nature of like Nova as a character since we're not used to focusing on one character as much. So we're having a lot of fun with that. No, so like work and what I like is completely <laughs> different. Um, but. Generally speaking, my favorite players are the ones that are a little more creative um, in terms of not not just strategy alone, but like for example, like Maru is a player that is not very strategically creative, but in terms of micro, he's very creative, right? He, he does moves that other Terran players don't really think about, right? So I like players like that, but also I like players who uh, can kind of sell themselves well because part of pro gaming is not just about being good at the game. It's also about... Um, attracting more fans and building up my name, things like that. So I like all the players who have both of these uh, factors, which we have a lot of at WCS here today. Yeah, so our campaign design team and the multiplayer design team is separate. And there is some overlap, like some people, some designers work on both parts of it, uh, some only focus on one or the other, but uh, we do treat uh, the campaign balance and multiplayer balance very differently because campaign has different goals compared to multiplayer. Like multiplayer, we have to worry about things like um, me using it and f it feeling overpowered versus the other guy on the receiving end um, reacting to it and things like that, whereas on the campaign, the main focus is every single thing that we put into the game must feel overpowered and really fun to use and so on. So because the goals are a little different, the teams are a little different as well.
So we're currently discussing that right now and we don't have the specifics uh, nailed down yet. But what we're currently planning on is maybe we distribute the skins in keys instead of just enabling it for you right when you purchase it and things like that. So if that happens to be the case, then maybe you can give it to your friends uh, through the keys. But um, because we haven't actually started working on the actual um, micro uh, content of the skins yet, uh, it's difficult to say for certain that this is how it's going to be, but uh, these are some things that we're thinking about right now. Yes, uh, we mentioned it at the Future of StarCraft II panel yesterday. Um, we're talking, uh, we're thinking about um, doing things like new unit skins or voice packs, uh, things like that. Um, there's a lot of great memories. I mean, we've had over time. Um, there's a lot of a lot of fun th moments we've had over the years. Probably my favorite one is when we uh, actually announced it. We went to Korea, and the whole team at that point got to fly out to Korea. And it was like a big secret. Nobody knew we were making StarCraft II. I mean, people, you know, had rumors, but nobody. We had, did a good job not leaking it or anything. Um, so we flew out there and we showed off all the new art. We showed the, the, the trailer, uh, build a better marine, um, and everybody, everybody just flipped out. And so it was a huge stadium, and, and it was it was amazing just being there and experiencing that, and feel the energy, and all the StarCraft fans who didn't maybe know know that was coming. And also it was a very proud moment for us because we had worked really hard getting the game to look as good as it could at that point. Which is funny because then later on we thought, yeah, that looks amazing. And then like six months later we're like, okay, we got to make this look better. And we went back and tweaked it. <laughs> I saw that event and applied and then got in and joined the team the same year, which is, was kind of cool. <laughs> but I think like I have a lot of fun um, eSport moments. And I think some of the most memorable ones are like when MMA beat... Uh, MVP at BlizzCon. I think it was the first, the biggest uh, StarCraft II tournament that we've had. Um, and then the crowd was going crazy. Like everyone was chanting MMA, like MMA, MMA for like such a long time. And then I think uh, one of the translators, uh, John the translator, I think he was, cried because he, was, he got so emotional by the <laughs> crowd, things like that. And awesome. I think that was a great moment. Yeah. Well, I think in general, you know, we always like that idea. I think it's a super cool idea, but we're so focused on just getting, you know, StarCraft out the door and getting the Nova missions going on. That's all we can think about right now. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's so many cool stories you could tell in a movie format. I mean, you know, Nova is, is a great character because she's, you know, a single character for like a ghost, you know, James Bond kind of thing if you wanted to. And, of course, there's that big main storyline of, of the universe with Rainer and Kerrigan. Um, there's so many side stories you could tell. I mean, it really is, there's a lot of potential there if we ever decided to get that out. Thank you guys. Cool. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, good yeah. questions.